Wanda Rutkovich once said, I don't seek death, but I don't mind if it happens in the mountains. It would be an easy death for me. Many of my friends are waiting for me in the mountains. Over the span of 30 years, Wanda became arguably the greatest female mountaineer in the world. She climbed the tallest and most difficult mountains around the globe, often becoming one of the first women to eclipse each peak. And on most of her climbs, she would not use supplementary oxygen, marking her accomplishments even more impressive. She was a true alpine climber, someone who set out to climb mountains with only the items she could carry, and did all this between 1962 to 1992. Today, climbing one of the 14 8,000 meter peaks is difficult, but many guides, porters, and companies can walk you to the top. This was not how Wanda Rutkovich climbed. During her life, she completed eight 8,000ers, the most by a woman at the time, and she planned on becoming the first female to complete all 14 peaks. But in the mountains, nothing is for certain. Over her 25 years of climbing, Wanda lost over 30 friends to the sport. Some of these friends would die while climbing with her, but it never stopped Wanda from continuing the climb. When asked about this, Wanda would state, as selfish as it is, it wasn't my death. I keep on living. As long as I have been creating videos about mountaineering, I have learned one thing. To be a great climber and one of the true legends, you have to be a little crazy. Wanda fits that description. This is her story. Today's video is going to be a little different from my usual videos. I'm going to focus on Wanda Rutkovich's life and how she became one of the greatest mountaineers of her time before focusing on her final climb. If you want to skip to the events of her specific expedition, I will put timestamps in the description. On February 4, 1943, Wanda Rutkiewicz was born in Plunge, Lithuania, to an educated Polish family. Following the conclusion of World War II in 1945, the family moved to Poland and would settle permanently in Wrocław. Wanda had an older brother that was two years older than her, and they were very similar but also competitive at a young age. Their mother did not work professionally and was a homemaker. She homeschooled the children until 1949, when Wanda would join an elementary school in second grade. Her father was the breadwinner and an ambitious man that clearly shaped the character of his children. He worked as an engineer and designer, and he loved sports. Wanda took after him in this regard, and always strived to be the best in whatever she did, whether it was primary school, volleyball, or track and field. Just succeeding was not good enough for her. She had to be number one. In elementary school, she showed her athletic prowess by being a multi-sport athlete that excelled. Every day before school, Wanda trained with her school coaches in track and field. She competed in multiple running events, high jump, long jump, discus throw, and her strongest event, shot put. Those that knew Wanda attributed her drive to be the best due to the tragic accident when she was five. Wanda, along with her brother and some friends, were playing outside one day in Wrocław. The group stumbled upon an unexpected bomb from the war. Wanda was not close enough to be physically affected, but she watched as her brother and some of his friends were blown up in front of her. All of Wanda's hard work in track and field would pay off in 1961, where she competed in the Polish University Club Championship. Here she clinched a gold medal in shot put, Wanda would also excel in school at the Polytechnic Institute and even join their volleyball team despite being relatively short for the sport. The team had great success and Wanda played a pivotal role in that. Leading up to the 1964 Olympics, there were rumors she was getting scouted for the Polish national team, but a random encounter completely changed the trajectory of her life. Climbing was a hobby for Wanda, but she certainly did not take it seriously or even consider a future in the sport. In fact, her passion for climbing developed by mere chance. 
On a random summer day in 1961, Wanda was riding her motorcycle when she ran out of fuel. Waving for assistance from passing travelers, a man named Bogdan Janowski stopped to help. Bogdan was a seasoned climber and would invite Wanda to join him on his next adventure. She would take him up on this offer and they climbed the Falcon Mountains in Poland. After her trip, she could not get the climb out of her head. She was hooked. Wanda soon found herself entrenched deep in the Tatra Mountains, otherwise known as the Polish Alps. She had joined the Wrocław High Mountain Club and was taking part of a mountaineering training course. She of course passed with flying colors, and her trainers noted her enormous willpower and strength. Wanda was so competitive that she would find a stronger climber and attempt to beat them at their own game. But this was only the start. After the Tatra Mountains, Wanda traveled to the Alps, where she completed the Triple Crown, the hardest challenge the range could provide. The Triple Crown means an individual summited the 4,805 meter Mount Blanc, the Eiger at 3,967 meters, and the deadly Matterhorn at 4,468 meters. An impressive feat that only advanced mountaineers accomplish. And Wanda did it very early in her career. She would continue to advance her skills, and before long, she felt ready to tackle new heights. Wanda would go on to marry her first husband, a mathematician with the last name Rukovich. Although they separated quickly due to Wanda's love of mountaineering, to her the mountains came first, and everything else in her life was a sub-priority. Wanda would end up keeping his last name throughout her life. Following her marriage, the 27-year-old embarked on her first 7,000-meter peak, Lenin in Pamir. The team was made up of all males, except for Wanda, and it was honestly hard for her to fit in. They did not respect her like they did the other men, and so she found herself in constant battles with them. Despite successfully reaching the summit, she did not enjoy the expedition, but this trip would play a critical role in her life. Because of her struggles, she thought to herself, why not make an all-female mountaineering team? Wanda would go on to make her dream a reality in 1975, when she coordinated and led an all-female mountaineering expedition on Gasherbrum 3. The peak stands at 7,946 meters, not quite an 8,000er, but you would be hard pressed to find another mountain that's close to the mark. They would be successful, and this would be the start to Wanda's notoriety. Her name began popping up in newspapers and magazines as it was harder and harder to deny her skills. The following years, Wanda made multiple attempts to conquer a Himalayan peak, but was unsuccessful after she fell ill with meningitis. This was a severe setback and delaying her climbing for years as she had to relearn basic motor skills such as walking and talking. But of course, knowing Wanda's personality, she was determined to return to the mountains and conquer the highest peaks. Due to her challenging climbs and successful summits, Wanda earned a reputation as one of the most formidable mountaineers in Europe. This would lead to an invitation from a German climber to join an international expedition of Everest. Hearing of this opportunity, Wanda was excited, and she could not say no. But once again, she struggled to fit in with her male peers. Gender equality was not viewed the same in 1970s, and many of the men felt insecure that a female mountaineer was as strong as Wanda. Because of this, she was treated poorly. Fed up with the expedition, but undeterred from continuing, Wanda decided she would climb alone. Now, I want to pause here to explain how difficult this truly is. Given the time period, there was not any external help on the mountain like you have today. If one was lucky, there would be an established guideline for the high altitude traverses. But if there was not, then you had to lay the line yourself. On top of that, there were very few to no other expeditions on the mountain at the same time. There was nobody on the mountain coming to save you. All climbers had to accept this grim fact before starting their journey. 
The only supplies she had were the things that she could carry on her back. She would have to trailblaze her route, forcing her way through waist-deep snow and below freezing temperatures. Not even the strongest mountaineers attempt to climb Everest or really any 8,000 meter peak this way in today's standards. It is almost impossible to replicate a similar climb on Everest today without major coordination and approval. The climb was tough and taxing, but her experience played a pivotal role in her journey. This is her dream, and she accepted the dangers that came along with it. Unfortunately, midway through her climb, her oxygen mask clogged with ice and was unusable. But that's the thing, none of these challenges mattered to her. She just kept going, and on October 16th, 1978, she would stand on the tallest mountain in the world, alone. She became the third woman in history and the first European woman to summit the mountain. Her climb, to this day, is one of the most impressive Everest scales in history. It catapulted her to stardom and cemented her as a mountaineering legend. Wanda could no longer hide who she was. After her summit, she was thrown into the spotlight and found herself giving interviews almost daily. Wanda would eventually return to Poland to continue her successful career as a computer engineer. But as the years went by, something was missing. She desperately yearned for the mountains. Wanda continued to believe that gender bias played a big role in her mountaineering experiences. Wanting to replicate her all-female expedition idea, she organized a strong team of exclusively women. Their goal was ambitious, the second tallest mountain in the world, the Savage Mountain, K2, which most mountaineers considered to be the most difficult 8,000er and one of the hardest peaks to summit on the planet. Wanda did not take the task lightly. As the team traveled to the Caucasus for a rigorous training regime, they faced harsh conditions and strong weather, but ultimately would successfully summit Elbrus, a 5,642-meter volcano. But on their descent, a skier accidentally bumped into her, causing her to tumble over 200 meters down the slope. This accident resulted in a broken femur. She received urgent medical help and underwent surgery to repair her leg, but would still require months of physical therapy. Wanda exercised so intensely during physical therapy that she actually suffered from repeated fractures. Despite this injury, Wanda still wanted to continue the expedition. The expedition was made up of 12 strong female climbers, all wanting to make history, but they would not be ready until 1982. Wanda traveled to K2 base camp on crutches. Yes, you heard that right. She traveled to K2 planning to climb with crutches. This memory is still talked about to this day by the local carriers around K2. She is remembered as the crazy Polish woman. Although the task seemed impossible, Wanda would state she wanted to achieve something others deemed unattainable. Although the journey proved to be extremely difficult for her, she heavily relied on her friends, painkillers, and fought through many tears. Eventually, Wanda and the expedition would make it to K2's base camp. The team was established and began preparations. Climbers were sent up to higher camps to place supplies and carve out the route. However, they would hit a roadblock when one of the expedition members, named Talina, suddenly lost consciousness in a higher camp and tragically passed away. Despite the death, the all-female expedition kept trying to reach the summit, stating Helena would have wanted that. They would be unsuccessful due to extreme weather conditions and had to call off the expedition. Despite the outcome, an all-female team certainly made headlines and caught the notice of other fellow mountaineers. This failure was only another speed bump in Wanda's career. In that same year, she would go on to summit the Killer Mountain Nanga Parvat. Wanda would have another failed attempt at K2 in 1985, and she would try again in 1986, a part of a French expedition. This was her third attempt for the summit, and they only had a few days to push for it. The weather on the mountain had been brutally tough that year, resulting in 13 deaths on the peak. Determined to make her final push, Wanda seized the opportunity when she had clear skies. 
Her climbing mates, Lillian and Maurice Berard, decided to stay and rest so Wanda was forced to climb alone once again, and climb she did, until eventually Wanda Rukovich stood on top of K2, making history as the first woman to ever summit the mountain. What made this feat even more impressive is the fact that she did it by herself and without supplemental oxygen, the most pure form of alpine climbing. She met back up with her friends, Lillian and Maurice, on her descent as they continued together. However, after a few hundred meters, the weather turned harsh and Wanda lost them in the storm. She waited at camp for her companions to return, but they never would. Despite reaching the summit of K2 that same day, Wanda would climb back up the mountain in the storm to look for her friends. She eventually had to return due to the difficult conditions. Other climbers on the mountain noted that Wanda returned to base camp completely covered in snow and ice. Her skin was pale and she was barely breathing. Most consider this climb to be the greatest achievement of her mountaineering career. Wanda was later asked why she continued to climb. At this point, she had lost so many friends to the sport. Wanda would reply, as selfish as it is, it wasn't my death. I keep on living. After her K2 summit, Wanda recognized that she asked others to put themselves in deadly situations. She was willing to do that to herself, but no longer for other people. This stage of her life marked the end of trying to build an all-female expedition, and instead, focusing on herself. From 1986 to 1991, she would achieve many successful summits. As her accomplishments grew, her fame and notoriety also reached new heights. Wanda had become such a strong mountaineer, most males couldn't keep up. Those that knew her in the later years called her selfish because she only cared about her own ambitions. In 1990, Wanda did begin to think about her life outside of the mountains. She fell in love with a man, but tragically, he would fall on Broad Peak and pass away in front of her eyes. After this experience, it was like a switch and Wanda flipped. She took the death really hard and those around her claimed she was really in love. She no longer talked about her future. All she said was her new goal was to conquer all 14 8,000 meter peaks. With only six more 8,000 meter peaks left to summit, the 49-year-old chose Kanchenjunga as her next option, which stands at 8,586 meters. She had attempted the peak two times before, and both times were unsuccessful. The expedition was a disaster from the start. Four members of the team had to withdraw due to severe illnesses, leaving only Wanda and her friend Carlos from Mexico. During their climb, Carlos noticed Wanda's pace was abnormal. She was slow. But Carlos considered her a legend, so not wanting to overstep, he allowed her to go at her own pace. It was a hard climb, and both climbers faced tough weathers. Carlos would eventually reach the top and begin his descent. On the way down, he would pass Wanda and again visibly notice she looked weak. But Wanda told him she was fine, and he trusted her expertise. There was nobody more equipped for the mountains than her. So who was he to tell her otherwise? Carlos returned to camp, fully expecting Wanda to return, but she never would. The body of the world's first lady of Himalayan mountaineering was never found. Her mother believed until the end of her life that her daughter had abandoned the Western world for a peaceful life in one of the Buddhist monasteries. The story of Wanda Rukovich is on the one hand a tale of self-destruction, and on the other, a story of how through strength of will, ambition, and great determination, dreams can be fulfilled and goals achieved. The Polish same has proclaimed 2022 as the year of Wanda Rukovich.